today we have a crazy story of an entitled parent doing the inevitable. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, is my mom, female 38, right in treating me, female 19, like this? I'm 19 year old female and I just moved back in with my mom after being at my grandma's for a year. My mom kicked me out because she didn't want me to order DoorDash without feeding everyone in the house. I was 18 and was sharing food with her kids, but that one time I ordered myself a milkshake. She told me not to eat the food in the house anymore, but a couple days later asked me to wash the dishes I hadn't ate from. All I did was ask her calmly, if I can't eat your food, what makes you think it's fair to make me wash your dishes? She lost her crap and asked my grandma to take me in, or I was going to be on the streets and she didn't give a freak. My grandma kicked me out because when I first moved in with her, her bedroom, I was meant to sleep in, was absolutely covered in trash and broken garbage bags, full of dirty clothes. She slept on the couch. I cleaned it up to make it livable for me as I'm not a dirty person. After she knew I cleaned it up, she had been threatening to take her room back and I'd have to leave. She finally ordered her some new curtains, bedroom decor, and got rid of me so she can have her dream room. Now my mother, who offered for me to live here, is causing me trouble again. Before I left, it was heck for a plethora of petty reasons. And now it's no different even though she said it would be. I've been actively job hunting since my first day here at her place and had no luck. This is her response. My mother has stopped allowing me to eat food in the house. I'm not allowed to consume anything from the kitchen unless it's water. I used to steal food, but she has cameras in her kitchen, living room, backyard, front yard, facing the kids' bedrooms, and bathroom that she watches like it's television, so she caught me. Threatened to take me to a shelter if I touched her food again. I must feed myself, but like I said, I'm jobless, and she knew that when she accepted me back home. My long-distance boyfriend, 19, gets me DoorDash every other day when he can. And even then, I'm not allowed to eat in the house. I have to eat it outside at the neighborhood park, no matter how the weather or how early it is. Or even if it's dark. There's no lights at the park, so it's pitch black out there. My boyfriend works long hours, so sometimes he works till 1am. If he offers me something after he gets off work, I have to decline it because I'm not allowed to order anything or leave her house after 10 p.m. Sometimes he can't afford to for days at a time and I'm left hungry. I'm not angry at him at all for that. I'm more than thankful for the financial help and emotional support he provides. I do hate having to depend on him to eat, but I'm trying for jobs and he's all I got. I never asked him to. He just offers and at first I would tell him no, but I got so hungry I couldn't say no. I'm expected to clean my mother and two younger sisters' dishes, 13 and 11, and even help prepare the food, but not allowed to eat. Rarely she'll order takeout and then when everyone's finished eating, I'm allowed a tiny portion of food. The smallest drumstick out of the KFC bucket and four french fries? I don't know if I'm just being greedy or a jerk, but it feels like I'm being fed scraps like a dog. After her doing that twice, I asked her why I wasn't allowed to eat. She said, because you don't eat unless you work. I'm starving you into getting a job. She knows I've been job hunting since I got here. I keep her updated on the places, interviews, the follow-up emails, and all the rejections. As unfortunate as it is for me to go hungry, I understand her thought process. Two weeks ago, she started a new rule. I'm not allowed to stay in the house or around the premises of the house if no one's home. I'm not allowed a set of keys or the code to the house security system. I have to wake up with her when she gets up from work and then leave out of the house when she leaves for work. I'm not allowed back in until my sister walks home from school and opens the door with her house keys. I don't have a car to sit in in case of the weather, so when it rains or it's cold I'm just freaked, soaking wet and shivering. If I need to use the bathroom, I'll have to walk to the nearest gas station and use the bathroom. Luckily it's open to the public. Today I almost bled myself, had to walk to my sister's school and get the keys to unlock the door, clean myself up, and then give them back to her. My mom has a ring doorbell and a million freaking cameras all over the house, pointed to the kids' bedrooms and bathroom to watch everything. She's had it that way since I was still in school and had my own room. I'm also not allowed to talk or text anyone including my boyfriend she knows helps me eat because otherwise I'd actually starve, on the phone I bought and pay the bill on. Anytime she catches me on the phone, she threatens to pack my bags up and drop me off at a homeless shelter and leave me there. Which she can do, I'm a legal adult and she doesn't have to let me stay in her house. But how crazy is that? Not being allowed to stay in the home you were allowed to live in again, not being able to stay dry and warm from the weather, not being able to eat, not being able to shower and change my pad when I've had an accident. Not being able to talk on my phone. 
not being allowed to have a comfortable place to sit or charge my phone. Before she started to kick me out, I'd get up and go job hunting and only come back until I had to pee or needed water or food. Job hunting is a full-time job and I've always treated it like such. She doesn't care though. Right now I'm sitting on her porch. She's already complained that I need to get off her tiny, it's the size of a porta potty literally, porch. I told her that it's starting to rain. She said she doesn't care. So even though I'm still going to be wet on this porch, at least it's close to the house. I also use this porch to charge my phone and plug in my heating pad when the weather is cold out, but she still doesn't care. I apply for jobs online, which doesn't require me to be outside, but she says I'm not allowed to sit in her house. We live in the digital age and paper applications are extremely rare to be an option. I've walked to every single business and shop within a 20 mile radius of the house, whilst her and my sisters sat in the car and followed behind me while talking crap about me being a lazy failure in life. I'd go in and ask if they were hiring, and they would laugh at me and tell me to apply online on their website in this duh tone. That's what I've been doing, but my mom thinks it's 1992 and that places have paper applications. I tried to explain that to her, but she didn't want to hear it and still doesn't. I've been applying every day on my phone for hours while I'm stuck out here. I've applied to everything from janitor, fast food to flight attendant, warehouses, and cabin agent for airlines at the local airport. I've done interviews, she offers to drive me to and tell her about it afterward. I keep her updated on everything. I need to know I'm not crazy and feeling frustrated here. I'm aware I'm a legal adult and she's not required to help me at all, but this is starting to feel unjust to me. This is bad treatment, right? Or am I just spoiled and don't know it? This is normal? What do I do to make this better? How can I fix this? I almost hope that this isn't an actual story. Like it makes me hope that this Reddit post is engagement bait or something. I think honestly, the homeless shelter would be by far in a way a better choice than this place. Like at least there, you're going to get some kind of meal and they're not going to give you crap about trying to find a job in a digital way. They wouldn't push you out into the rain when they gotta go to work in the morning and say, nope, don't step on the premises. Honestly, I think if OP could document all of this and prove how they've been treated, there's some like internet sympathy GoFundMe potential here to get yourself on your feet. Least of all, I have to say, it's not surprising that somebody this controlling has a bunch of cameras all over the house, but from what OP said, they record inside the bathrooms and bedrooms. You're telling me that this mom has these cameras set up, pointed at and in the bathroom, watching them vigorously as their kids use the restroom? It's time to contact CPS. O underscore zero H wrote, No, this is not acceptable, and your mother is terribly abusive. Your grandma doesn't sound great either. It could be generational abuse slash trauma. I don't live with my parents anymore and haven't for years, but when we lived under the same roof, even if we had disagreements, my mom always made sure I had plenty to eat. I'm sorry you're going through this. Is there anyone else you can stay with? Friends? Boyfriend? It sounds like the safest thing to do in your situation is to leave your mom's home. I would contact youth shelter organizations in your area that might be able to offer you some temporary support as well. This is not normal. Your mom is abusive. The same OP then posted, Apparently I, 19-year-old female, have an extremely abusive mother, 38, and had no idea. So I want to start this off by thanking you guys for your responses and suggestions. I appreciate it very much. I also want to say that I knew I wasn't freaking crazy. She had me genuinely thinking I was starting to lose my mind when I would feel extremely pitiful and then talk about it to my boyfriend. She hates when I do that. She hates being discussed. He doesn't even know her so she's not bothered because he might do something. It's just a bullet to the ego because she knows what she does is wrong and they won't agree with it. They'll think and talk badly about her and she no longer feels like the big bad wolf. It took me yesterday to understand that. The clarification and relief I feel is overwhelming. So thank you guys for that. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. I got too excited. I'm just getting an interview at Sam's, but that's still amazing news and thanks to everyone who congratulated me. On the other hand, I'm very surprised at the response I've gotten from the majority of you guys. I never really considered that this might be abuse. I just assumed that since I was a legal adult that none of that mattered and she could do whatever she wants other than assault me. I figured if I called the cops they'd agree with her and she'd just kick me out the moment they came to confront her. She likes to weaponize the shelter obviously and I know nothing about surviving in a shelter. 
Are there rules or things I should know before even thinking about leaving? Would all my belongings be safe? I can't afford to have anything stolen, especially not my electronics. Do they have showers? Laundry? For the people suggesting the military, I'm deathly afraid of the military. My mom has totally ruined the military for me. I'm not sure if I can go through with that. Before I was kicked out of my mom's place, I was accepted into a very local community college and I planned to study respiratory therapy. She kicked me out right before I started and my grandma lives in a different state. I didn't have a car and the Ubers were very expensive. For that I had to drop out. I went three days and then dropped out. I talked to my teachers about my situation and they basically all said the same thing. That's tough. Trade school may be a better option or I just need to get caught up on the lectures. I thought I could handle the Uber money but then I realized how much money I'd be spending every week and knew I had to give up. I spent that whole year at my grandma's house extremely depressed and discouraged. She lived far away from all my educational and job opportunities and my mom, who couldn't even pretend to be happy for me, took that college experience away from me over something so petty. She made getting accepted into college so freaking stressful. I got accepted and told her the day of. I was excited until she wasn't. I thought that it wasn't something to be proud of because she didn't sound happy. Then when it came down to FAFSA, she's one of those scared of the government people, so she didn't want to fill out my FAFSA, and purposely waited till the last day of FAFSA deadline to finally do it. She complained the whole time about why the government wanted to know all her information like a freaking idiot. I was crying that she was playing around with my life with such spite. She did that on purpose and admitted it to me after begging her for weeks. She's one of those unintelligent people who think they're so profound and unique. I could go on for days about the crap she says and does in order to try to be different from society. She's put herself in a competition with made up followers and in her mind she's the leader. It's kind of hilarious now that I sit back and think about it. Very cringe things to say about yourself. Like seriously, who the freak do you think you are? Your average at best, bench. She thinks in self-gratifying Facebook quotes. She's terrified of the government. She lives in the suburbs as a past broke single mother and teen mother. Until the past seven years, she's needed the governmental benefits every step of the way. She wasn't scared of them then. Now that she's gotten into Zodiacs and think black people, we're black Americans with no knowledge about our ethnic background whatsoever, like most of us are the real Moors, Israelites and Egyptians. She's terrified of the government. She believes in a slurry of conspiracy theories, including, yes, that's right, Flat Earth. She uses a weird pink herbal powder she bought online for toothpaste and raves about her being such a natural person. She's also fatphobic, homophobic, and doesn't claim Christianity, but still uses it to make me feel bad about myself saying that I'm a demon and I have a demon inside of me, that I need God and that I'm an abomination. I called her out on those things, but she always lies and tells you excuses. And every word that comes out of her mouth is a freaking lie. I hate when she does that, like I didn't hear her say the crap she said. She thinks herbal remedies can compete with modern medicine for everything. She is a wannabe hippie of some sort, but she works a government job, lives in a suburb, and drives a Lexus eats takeout every single day. She hates the government's food and they're poisoning us, so she grew a garden. She eats her takeout in the car and then brings the almost empty container in the house where the kids beg for it because she doesn't cook and if they touch the food in the fridge, she'll get angry with them and start yelling at them and belittling them. She's always been very strange when it comes to food. There's so much I could tell you guys about her being an absolute freaking weirdo on her Facebook university ideologies, weird punishments and humiliation tactics, but I feel like I'm boring you all. Some of you guys say she's psychotic. I think she suffers from NPD. She loves to throw around the word narcissistic when you don't do what she likes. She calls everyone else narcissistic. I think she knows deep down it's her, but she just projects it onto everyone else as a coping method. Genuinely, I'd love to see her get mentally evaluated and see the diagnosis. And she's put us all into therapy, besides herself and my youngest sister, her golden child, calls us crazy for refusing the crap she asks of us or becoming depressed and wanting to end things. She belittles my lack of social skills and lack of social life in my face, publicly shames me about my body and puts me on the spot and makes people look at me badly. She's the biggest hypocrite I know and I hate her. I want to get away too, but I don't know what lies beyond these walls. I have an aunt that knows a tiny bit how crazy my mom is. 
She said if things don't go well with my mom, I'd always have a place with her. She has a room in her house that's empty, a son that's 14, and a fiancé. I could take online classes until I get a car, work my job, clean, cook, stay quiet and out of their way. I'm not loud nor obnoxious anyway. I think if I sat down and told my aunt all that was going on, she'd force me to leave anyway. If what you guys are saying is true, it's hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that you guys say it's abuse. I've never thought of it that way. I don't know if something's wrong with me because of that. My mom's not a good person, nor does she treat me or my siblings normally. You know, in high school, I'd threaten her with CPS if she wouldn't buy groceries for the house sometimes, and me and my sisters were hungry. I knew that wasn't right. She acts poor, but even everyone in the family knows she has more than enough money to take care of her household. She's been sitting on that crap for decades. If she's not a millionaire, or almost a millionaire by now, I'd be very surprised. She loves to act like she's struggling though, and will pull the poor single mother card. If you're a single mom with a job, you should be finding a way to keep your children fed. That's not an excuse to not feed your children, right? She's middle class at worst. Her job pays well. She brags about it until we ask her to get groceries or eat something she didn't want us to. I have a terrible relationship with food because of that woman. I'm afraid to eat, really. That's as simple as I can put it. Very health conscious and idolized skinniness. She's fat phobic too, which I was at one point in time but grew out of it once I started talking to other kids my age, like most of her freaked ideas. I could go on and on about her for days, seriously, but thank you guys for the help and I'll keep you updated. After hearing this update, I just hope and hope and hope OP reached out to that aunt. It doesn't matter if you have to move a whole state away, it doesn't matter if you have to move across the country, starting over with that aunt who will actually support you and, you know, let you eat food? I don't understand how OP's holding out. Traditional Onion 461 wrote, OP, I just want to give you a hug and tell you that you're going to be okay. Please get in touch with your auntie and get out the heck hole you're currently enduring. I'm glad that you've listened to other posters and are realizing that the life your mom has given you is really, really not okay. I have great hope that you'll escape this, get qualifications and a good job eventually, despite the cruel cards you'd been played. My wish for you is a happy, healthy life with people who love you and treat you right. Good luck. Our next story is also by the same OP, The Inevitable Happened. So this morning, I was editing the blog that I recently just posted when my mother barged into the room and screamed at me and my sister to wake up. Like I said before, she wakes me up with the rest of the family so we can get up and leave the house because I'm not allowed to be in the house unless she's there. The first thing she asked me is how I got in the house. She watched her video footage and saw me unlocking the door and going in to get my phone and then exiting. I locked the door and left the house, knowing that I'd still be stuck there for hours in rainy weather. She was more than upset. She started belittling me and telling me that I'm not allowed in her freaking house unless she's there to supervise me. She asked me how I got the key and my sister spoke up saying she gave it to me. My mom said that I need to never go to my sister's school and ask for anything and that she's taking me off the emergency contacts list for my sisters at their school. She took my sister's security passcode off the security system dashboard so she can't enter into the house. She told my sister that for helping me, she's going to have to stay on the porch until she gets home with me. My sister said that she's calling CPS if she gets home and she's not able to enter the house, and she's calling her father. My sisters can actually go with their dad. He has joint custody and honestly if anything went down, I would prefer them to be with their dad's side anyways because they have money. They'll be well taken care of. Their family is normally functioning, unlike my mom's side. Me on the other hand, she said when she gets home, I'm getting dropped off at the shelter. I'm still sitting out here in the hot park by myself, no food, water, no access to bathrooms, and not allowed to sit on her porch because I run her security camera batteries down, and I look stupid to her neighbors even though I told her I have a job. She doesn't care. Before I got here, she made me record a verbal contract of her and me agreeing to her allowing me to stay here, and then when I get a job, I start taking care of myself. I didn't get it until yesterday, and I was still fending for myself. She's still being a total jerk. I have an aunt that's willing to take me in. I called her early this morning first thing after the argument and explained the situation, but I haven't gone into detail about what's going on behind closed doors. I told her about the food and leaving me out for hours thing. She doesn't know about a lot of things. A lot of things that I've never told another soul. 
One particular thing is something I don't want to because I don't want weirdos to start messaging me and asking for weird crap. I don't know if this is allowed here, but I'll speak on it vaguely because I feel like it's important to the story. I used to work for the most successful virtual streaming site on the internet. The money was amazing. I made over a thousand dollars my first day in four hours. When I got my first check, it was over six thousand. The first day I did it and I made one thousand. I told my mom immediately. I told her how much I made. She was intrigued. She was also jealous. She would look at me very disgustingly but always ask about my paycheck. When is your check coming? Constantly. I didn't get my check because it kept getting delayed. She kicked me out before it could even get mailed, so I was in another state while my check was being sent to her house. My mom told me. She arranged a date for my grandmother to drive me to meet her halfway to pick up my check. Again, my grandma lived in a different state. Before that date came, she called and told me she lost my check. Magically, the day before the day I was supposed to pick it up, she lost my check. I knew then and there my mom was a jealous lying bench. I cried so freaking hard. For hours. That was my first time making money for myself. Or even seeing myself have a lump sum of money, which 6000 might seem like nothing to a certain group of people, but to me that was life changing. The day of, she told me she finally found it because a coworker found it in her truck, called her and told her to come pick it up. Sure, bench. I never believed her, but as soon as I got my check, I started spending. I bought an iPhone, new clothes, hygiene products, hair products, all the things I didn't have to take care of myself with before I left her house. I know now that that was irresponsible. I'd been sheltered all my life up until this point. Spending the money made me feel good about myself in the situation. I forgot about the detrimental situation I was in when I was online shopping. I was also door dashing a lot. My grandma used to beg me to buy her things and to buy her food. I would share food with everyone in the house, but I only bought things for myself because I am my top priority. I'm the one that's broke without a job, that's going house to house. I don't need to buy you a pack of panties, that's your job. I'm grown and I'm buying my own underwear and no one else's. You don't even know your measurements, lady. She invaded my privacy a lot, and every time I got a new package, she'd follow me to the room and sit down to watch me open it. She would follow behind me and ask what I had, what it was, how much I bought it for. I would go in my room and lock the door. That's when she started resenting me. She started threatening to take her room back. Her and my aunt would beg for things constantly. I didn't have any socks when I got there, so I bought myself some cute cabin socks. My aunt would beg for my socks after I explained that those were my only socks. I just want one pair. I told her no profusely. My aunt would ask me to do her feet with the nail polish that I just bought before I even got to open it and use it for myself. They had no problem, but when I didn't give it to them, they were upset with me. I was feeding everyone in the house, I bought lots of food, then my money started drying up and I started to realize that I had to be responsible and buy groceries for myself. I would buy lots of pasta and yogurt and fruit. My family is a poor, black, uneducated family in the South. They're scared of things they don't understand and associate them with whiteness to belittle it and make themselves feel better. I would be called white for eating tortellini pasta, for eating strawberry yogurt, eating whole wheat bread instead of Wonder Bread, drinking water instead of Kool-Aid, wearing my pants low-waisted because I have a long torso and wide hips. I can't really wear it any other way. For doing my skin care, for not talking with the stereotypical Memphis accent and using a wide vocabulary. My family called me white when I wasn't doing things that weren't hood enough for them. My own family called me white and would be doing things that weren't hood enough for them. They were that uneducated. It made being there less tolerable day by day. I want to go back in time and reverse it, but I can't. My money is gone. I have around $50 to my name right now. When I got to my grandma's house, I got a random call from my mom. I was like, hello? She asked me, what's the site? I said, what are you talking about? She said, the site you stream on. I had to pause and mute myself to sit there and laugh. She talked so much crap about me being in that line of work and then randomly called me on the phone to do it herself. She talks about herself and makes other people think that she's a saint. 
she's innocent and I'm some nasty perverted demon. She tells all her friends really freaked up crap about me. That's not true and completely biased. She does the exact same thing. I sent her the link to the least lucrative site I could think of because I needed help with my FASA and I didn't want her declining helping me when I needed it, so I gave her a site. She told me she's done it over the phone, but I have screenshots of her asking me about it. She thought she was slick by deleting the messages immediately after sending them, but I'm quicker. That's right, folks. Kick your daughter out for being a tramp, but ask her for details on doing the same thing. That's only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the hypocrisy of my mother. I've never told anyone, and no one knows she does it. That will be changing today because she decided that she wanted to kick me out and take me to a shelter. Well, guess what? If you're gonna freak me over, I'm gonna freak you over too. I'm airing her crap out completely. I think I'm gonna tell my aunt everything. She loves to humiliate me, so we'll see how fun it is watching her get a taste of her own medicine. I'm tired of her lying and bullcrapping on my name. I'm fresh out of high school. I know nothing. I have nothing. Why must you do this to me? Make me feel as if I'm some idiot stepchild. Like I'm not worthy of a warm place to be, some food in my stomach, water, a place to crap and pee and change my tampon, feeding me scraps like I'm some kind of freaking dog? You have to be really mental to do some crap like that. You invited me here knowing I didn't have anything to my name and promised to take care of me up until I got a job, but did you do that? No, you did not. She freaking disgusts me in every way. She talked so much crap to me this morning while I was leaving and my sisters were all fed up. My aunt's coming to get me after she gets off of work at 2pm. My sister left me the keys to the house secretly so I can get my things from the house and I'll leave her keys in her bedroom. That'll be the last time I come to this freaking house. My mother is sick, just like her mom. I didn't realize that my mom was not a great person until yesterday, but I didn't realize that my grandma wasn't a great person until I went to live with her. Always thought of her with high regard, despite not really understanding that I didn't really know her. Because, you know, the title of grandmother is something you hold very dearly. You think of them highly. My grandma's a lying, grimy bench. And both of them deserve each other. Worst mothers ever. They both belong in an insane asylum. I don't know if I should call the cops on my mom or not. She's terrified of the police. I think she knows that if I call them, They'll be up her butt in a matter of seconds after I explain to them what's been going on, especially with her younger children. That's very freaking illegal. You know, the best part is that we don't even need to record her because she does it herself. She has cameras all over the freaking place documenting every crappy thing she says and does and reiterates. It's freaking beautiful. I can't wait to blow up in her face. I long for the day I see that bench in handcuffs, I swear. Now, I'm not sure on details regarding if she's done anything illegal enough to be sent to jail, but if anybody knows, please let me know. Can she go to jail for this crap? Because if she can, I'm going to try to make it happen. I think some jail time will do her good. Kind of like what I said earlier, especially if they're recording anything that goes on in the bathroom, I would imagine that's not very legal. On top of all of the other disgusting displays like hardly feeding their kids, trying to keep food from their kids, I mean, if they treat their underage kids even like one-tenth of the way they treat OP, there's definitely some serious violations going on. Inevitable Librarian wrote, If she's recording in the bathroom, I'd check the internet cause, well, mom might be selling videos of you going to the bathroom. And if she did that when you were underage, oh boy. Now as for your mom, wait, get a good job, get the freak away from her, never tell anyone where you live, nothing that they can use to locate you. If you send something to them, if a friend is on vacation, ask them to take it with and mail it. It'll freak with her when she gets stuff from Boston, LA, Rome, Seoul, and New York City. And when she's old, put her in the worst retirement home near her house, and when you leave, whisper in her ear, oh and don't worry. They will let you in here instead of locking you out and walk away, never to see her again. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.